Welcome to Syndicated Nightmares, where each week we take a deep dive into an episode of Freddy's Nightmares based on the Nightmare on Elm Street film series. This week, hosts Dave and Michelle are joined by Mark Estes to talk about Season 2, Episode 11, Dreams That Kill, directed by Tom DeSimone and written by Tom Blomquist, original air date December 11th, 1989. So the synopsis for this episode is in the sequel to Dream Come True, Charlie Nichols, the new host at Springwood Confidential, receives a warning from Freddy not to proceed with his latest show topic, Dreams That Kill. Meanwhile, a doctor performs an experimental brain matter transplantation surgery on a patient that results in the man awakening with another man's personality and dreams. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Will you... uh... Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Of course, my name is Mark Estes. I am a huge Fred head. I like to tell people that I'm a broke Fred head. I don't have too much memorabilia, though, but I do have a lot of uh, memories. And um, that's pretty much it. I, okay. Um, I mean, I just, I'm big on the whole Nightmare on Street mythology and whatnot. And so... I think I'm one of the few people who try to incorporate Freddy's nightmares into the overall timeline. Some people just act like they just don't think it ever happened. So when it comes to like the whole canonical, I cannot pronounce that word to save my neck, Mm -hmm. um, aspect of Freddy's, uh, of the Freddy Krueger mythology, but I have ways to incorporate all of it into the overall narrative. But, and I also have a website called Midnight Social Distortion, and I'm just now getting it up and running. So that's, that's pretty much it. All right. What's the website about? It's geared toward um, the LGBT, Black LGBT um, representation in horror, but not just that. Um, anybody can, you know, find something there. Um, and I'm also just trying to show people that we don't always die <laughs> in the first part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did uh, for... for um, Black History Month, I did, like, once a day, I did uh, one female and one male, or black female and male, who did not die in a horror movie for the whole month of February, and I still have tons to go, so. Oh, good, okay. (laughs) Fantastic. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, so, that was my thing for February, and I'm really Mm -hmm. gearing up again to do some more stuff, um, especially try to get some stuff out this week for Pride, so. Yeah, all right, Um, so we'll jump into the episode. This is a sequel from a previous one that um, that was aired, the pilot episode for season two. Yeah, and it starts out with the host. Um, so he's a new host on this show, Springwood Confidential, which was established in, in the prior episode. And he mentions the uh, um, psychiatrist and the cameraman who died uh, in the prior episode. And then he says the former host... Um, was smothered to death by his own pillow, but that was, that's something new, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he died that way in in the season two, episode one. Mm -hmm. Did he even die in the first episode? I I can't remember. I I can't recall. Was it, was it Jay Thomas, the actor? Yeah. He was was the one who played the host? Yeah, so he he didn't die, did he? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Maybe they just couldn't get him back to. Yeah, to do a so episode. they just killed him off. <laughs> yeah. Before I found you guys, I was watching Freddy's Nightmares at work because I found the complete series somewhere, and I started watching it at work. And I came across this episode right before you guys assigned it, so I was like, okay, um, I like how it started out because it was just like you know, it pretty much was a recap without being like last time on Freddy's Nightmares. Mm-hmm. It was just like, yeah, you know that you they, they familiarized the audience with what happened previously, which, which story they were connecting it to, and I thought it was well done that way, personally. So mm-hmm. The new host, his name is Charlie. Um, as Dave said, he's kind of like telling the audience everything that happened to the previous host, and then um, I, I remember he he's like, Freddie comes on set and goes to slice his neck, but then he he wakes up from the dream and he's like being having a clean shave by his on set barber or something, and then the barber mm-hmm. like nicks his, yes. his neck, and <laughs> so that's how 
how he thinks, you know, that or why he dreamt that he was uh, sliced by Freddy. I feel bad for the barber. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why do you feel bad for him? Because it was just like Charlie was an asshole. I just just by the way he after he introduced everything and then you can just see he was like a sleaze kind of like a thing like a sleaze ball and then when he was just like just tossing around shit and stuff i'm sorry can we cuss yeah yeah you okay (laughs) we do all (laughs) that i do okay okay because i cuss like a sailor um but he but yeah it was just i just felt bad for the barber because like it was a nick he he nicked he he turned his head so what are you supposed to happen if you turn your head i guess but the barber was you know shaving someone who was asleep so which doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do <laughs> yeah, i agree i agree yeah, i agree so well freddie comes to tell charlie not to do the dreams that kill segment anymore he for whatever reason freddie doesn't want that that segment to air yes, yes. yeah because he was going to talk about randy jennings the the teenager from the from the prior episode. Mm-hmm. Freddie's worried that people are going to, well, it'll scare everyone into staying awake. And I have yeah. a, I have a, this is what I was talking about earlier that I was thinking about how it incorporates to the overall narrative, but I can get to that later. Oh, no, you know? no, go ahead. Oh, because my thing with Freddie's nightmares are always, because they took place between, what, three, four, and five. And I always thought that after like the main characters from the movies defeated him he needed like to build his energy up and i always looked at phrase nightmares as a way the the, the people who he incorporate he encounters in phrase nightmares were people who helped him recuperate his energy and so when he was like um you're gonna scare too many people away i was thinking like oh he's trying to build up his energy to come back and you know wreck havoc for like alice or somebody mm-hmm. later on down the line so, mm-hmm. yeah yeah, that's I I feel that way too. That this series was just kind of a, a bridge to show how Freddie was able to keep his energy between three, four, and five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So in the episode when Charlie wakes up, he's like really freaked out that Freddie came to visit him. So he wants to uh, completely nix the whole dreams that kill segment, and uh, they're like, "Well, if if you do that, we're gonna fire you because." You know, you're you're in contract to do this, um, to do this segment. And then he has like these really weird guests on his show, some like punk rocker and uh, this like anal <laughs> retentive <laughs> psychiatrist, <laughs> and they like kind of mm-hmm. yeah. butt heads. It was a really weird moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I was like. You can tell this is way before the Me Too movement because the stuff they were saying on their set, and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" They that would not fly today. So yeah, I had that same exact thought where the punk rocker guy was like, "I'll take you out back," and like does this crude tongue movement, and she's like, "Oh my goodness, I've never." <laughs> Yeah, that totally Ugh. would not fly today. Like, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, and she starts, like, have, it devolves into this physical fight on the on the stage, and, and the host ends up getting hit with her. He gets hit in the head with her purse because she's swinging it at the, the punk rocker, mm-hmm. and that leads to the next nightmare. Yeah, so he's he's knocked out, and then he... He dreams like he wakes up and he's being fired and is going to be replaced by another host. And that host just happens to be Freddy. So Freddy now has a talk show and he's like standing up there like Oprah pretty much or, uh, you know, not not really saying, you know, you get a nightmare and you get a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> he was a pretty good host. <laughs> He's like, you know, you used to grill the guests, and now the guests are grilling you. And he's like, literally, Charlie's literally being grilled on on a giant grill. The prior guests on on the show are on there now, and Freddie like hands out his his burnt limbs, like Charlie's limbs, and they just start eating, it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> keeping his his hands and his legs or whatever. <laughs> I liked how the uh, um, the anal retentive uh, psychiatrist, after the punk rocker ate, bit and handed here, 
he bit it to the hand, handed it to her, and she I noticed how she just took this, her napkin, like wiped his like you know, wiped it off of him and then just ate it. I'm like, but she knows she still has ill will towards him, so that was pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what your mouth did, son, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Charlie wakes up in the hospital and he tells his girlfriend who also works with him about his uh, dream with Freddie and they piece together like oh that's the same Freddie that the previous host was dreaming about like this is bad news guys let's you know let's try to figure out how to stop this and, and yet they end up in bed with each other which I thought was <laughs> hilarious because I'm like you know how in the hell you gonna how in the hell you got when when the, when, the, when the nurse came in? That's when it got really ridiculous. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like you know that can happen in any hospital, though. But when the nurse comes in and can clearly see these two bodies in the same bed, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Let me fluff your pillow." I'm like, "No, you, you see what the hell's going on? Get out of here." That was like <laughs> that was the most unsexy sex scene in a hospital bed I have yes. ever watched on TV. Yeah. Like whoever their intimacy choreographer was, like <laughs> did not do a good job. <laughs> it was it but was, it was just awkward. like pretty risque for eighties television though, because you, yes. you saw like a lot of side boob. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Can y'all imagine me watching that at work? I have to sit there and be like, Jesus Christ. I'm like every five minutes I know one of my one of my cars is like, Mark, what in the hell are you watching over there? I'm like it's Freddy Krueger. It's it's Freddy Krueger. It's 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 not a it's not an old skin and mask movie I got over here. So please don't run tell everything. So. so they get done grossly making out in the hospital bed, <laughs> and some yeah, this kid named Randy Jennings is being wheeled by, and he has a dart wound in his neck from s- sleeping or something. I I think it I I don't know. I was like, I barely caught on to what happened to this kid. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy from the previous episode, which I kind of hated. We didn't get a final, you know, because you know, the first episode, the kid actually survived Freddy. I don't know. I, I know he, um, the psychiatrist in the first episode, mm-hmm. like, pretty much lured him away from the kid. But it's like, damn, Freddy still ended up getting this damn kid. To eat. Yeah, <laughs> because. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just hate that he we didn't get a chance to like see that like he come by the episode or something like that. Maybe they could have had him come visit Charlie instead of giving us this um sad excuse of a sex scene. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to, just to sit there and say, "Remember me?" Yeah, I'm the kid from the free previous episode, and then like you know, finish him off afterwards. But yeah, or maybe the producers could have been like previously on Freddy's Nightmares and like given us a recap from the first episode from season two you know like that would have been mm-hmm. helpful i just think that well i don't want to skytrack for a minute but i just feel like this whole entire second season was very much um it was more serialized yeah and mm-hmm. i just think that they didn't think people was going to pick up on certain characters or certain throwbacks to other episodes and whatnot mm-hmm. but when the when the guy when Charlie started talking, I'm like, oh, this is the one from episode one. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Now. Yeah. yeah. So we find out that there's this random kid, uh, Randy Jennings. Not well, not so random. So we find out that Randy Jennings has been hit in the neck with a dart from sleeping, and then we go back on set to where Charlie he wants to introduce Randy as his uh, next guest. But as he's reading the cue cards, he learns that Randy is now dead. And that kind of pisses Charlie off because he's like, you know, we're not doing this segment anymore. I put my foot down. Why are you making me do this? Yeah. yeah. And then his producer is like, well, we're doing it with or without you. And and then he and then he gives in and says, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't like how they played out because I'm like, how the hell would you you're gonna feed him a card? You, he's going to he's going to have a um a conniption fit on set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if, and my thing is, if y'all are this scared of him, who's in, who's really in charge here? Is it Charlie or is it the studio? Because I, I kind of got confused at this sometimes, you know, so. Yeah, I, I think it was more the studio was in charge than Charlie. Charlie thought that he was in charge, but he was just basically their, their puppet. Um, they were using his, yeah. his popularity with the TV audience. But, um, so yeah, so then um, 
he tries to quit the the segment and he's basically blackmailed into keep to keep doing it and when he's about to film it they're like messing with camera lights or whatever and so there's downtime and uh he start uh, Charlie dreams of Freddy and they have their little interaction and Freddy ends up electrocuting Charlie and I thought Charlie died, but apparently he's just in a coma. Boy, that's when shit got real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. So, yeah, so then we cut to he's, like, suspended in this from the ceiling in this hospital lab, which I thought was, like, this really cool visual, like this sort of futuristic hanging from the ceiling in, in this white room. Um, and he's in a coma, and they don't know if he'll ever recover. Um, and the doctor is, um, I was like, oh my God, it's Steve's mom from 90210. Yes, it's, it's, so. it's Samantha Sanders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. She's been in so, so many TV shows prior to this, but to us, she's Samantha Sanders. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought I recognized her. I feel like such a dumbass not recognizing who that woman was. I know she uh, looks familiar as hell. Uh-huh. I don't know where she's from. Yep. <laughs> so it, it seems like Charlie is in this coma because Freddie wants him there so Freddie can torture him while he's in this perpetual dream state. That's that's what I got from it anyway. Mm-hmm the torturing did he 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 rammed the glove of charlie's butt what two or three times yeah yeah so i was like hey what's going on yeah this is this is a moment where i just had to like pause and i i remember that the bible belt wanted this show taken off the air because of how violent it was and knowing that sometimes when i watch the episode or the the episodes i think like okay was was it this moment that the bible belt was like okay (laughs) this has gone too far and i want to say that this this was the moment this was the exact moment (laughs) (laughs) that they said no more because it was even for like it being freddy i think it this was more severe torture than what he had done in the in the actual films yes yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the yeah. person who's in the ba- I'm in the belt buckle of the Bible belt. So yeah, I I just I can't recall when this show stopped airing though, but I just noticed that there was no more Freddie Night Fair yeah. anymore. <laughs> so it might have been this one. Might have yeah. been this one. <laughs> so Charlie is dangling from the ceiling by all these like IVs and everything, which is, apparently is perfectly normal in this hospital to do. And Freddie comes in his dream state. And kind of like separates his legs like a woman at the gynecologist's mm-hmm. office and mm-hmm. takes his glove and examines his his prostate, if you will. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, what the hell? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was at work like, oh shit, am I the market okay over there? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, but Jesus <laughs> Christ. Like <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. So um, then the doctors notice that the monitors that Charlie is hooked up to, they are just like going off the charts. Like in uh, Nightmare 1 when Nancy was hooked up to the monitors and it was like showing 30 and all that. Um, that's where Charlie was. Uh, yeah, and they, so they think he's, he's dreaming even though he's in a coma. Yeah. Which can you dream when you're in a coma? I think you're in, in too deep, right? For REM cycle. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I've never met a comatose person after they've woken up. They're like, man, I had the weirdest dream. You know, <laughs> like, right. never... <laughs> there's a trauma victim that comes in, and his name is Mark, I believe. And apparently, he needs a, and this might be new science, but he needs brain cell transplant. Yes. Yeah, and apparently at this <laughs> hospital in Springwood, Ohio, they feel they are confident they can do this brain cell transplant because uh, Charlie has healthy brain cells and Mark needs healthy brain cells. So they just want to do like a little switcheroo. And uh, Samantha Sanders is like, no, 
we can't do that. That's like science fiction. That's totally above our capability. It's, um, it's been done before, but it's controversial and blah, blah, blah. And the other doctor is like, no, we're, we're totally going to do this. Like, <laughs> come on. It's, yeah, I called him Herbert West Jr. from uh, Reanimator because I'm like, this is some Reanimator type shit right now. So yeah. <laughs> right. And he looks just like Herbert West or, um, oh God, what's the, um, Jeffrey Combs. He looks just like, mm-hmm. like a, a, like he'd be a Jeffrey Combs stand in. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they, they say like it's never been done on a person before. Like they've only tested it on animals, right? Yeah, but how would they how would they know that it was successful for an animal? I mean, I guess if the animal woke up, but mm-hmm. yeah. Hmm. But yeah. Yeah. But it seems like an easy procedure. You just <laughs> take out some brain cells with a syringe and stick it in the other person. Yeah. But and they like they stick a needle in your ear and mm-hmm. shoot it in there. <laughs> what what kind of fucked up procedure is that? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm yeah. cool. Yeah. My, I, was, I was like, do what you gotta do, though, but Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> that would be the <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah, but Samantha Sanders, yeah. Samantha Sanders says no, but, the, but Herbert West does it anyway. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, apparently it's a great success because Mark wakes up, but dear Charlie dies. Okay, it's probably good for Charlie because uh, <laughs> he was being tortured nonstop by Freddy. Yeah, yeah. That. So then Mark is wheeled around the hospital and he's, he's brought by what was Charlie's room. And Mark gets a sense of familiar, familiarity of this room. And so it's kind of becoming obvious that like oh, he has some of Charlie's memories or at least some of his, like, senses, you know? Yeah, and then he sees the girlfriend, and he her name is Britt, and he recognizes her and calls her Britt. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, how do you know me? And he's like, oh, I just had you confused with somebody else. Like, he recognizes her but doesn't know why he recognizes her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then that night, uh, Mark dreams of Britt coming into his hospital room and undressing... And it it was it was flashbacks all over again. <laughs> um, yeah, it, not not fun to watch. But that was only a dream, and it was a short dream. Um, and then Mark is released from the hospital the next day, and I kind of want to question his insurance company because after you have brain cell transplant surgery. What's the recommended amount of days to stay in the hospital for recovery? <laughs> I don't think I it's like it, 14 hours. <laughs> I thought it was like two weeks. Oh, had it been two I weeks? Thought, okay. I thought there was like a time lapse between when they I, when they did that. I hope so. The, yeah. yeah it was pretty quick. It was pretty quick. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Even being a motorcycle accident, so I'm thinking like even two weeks still, like shit, I would have been like, Fairly moving around, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so anyway, so he's on his way home, and I, I got the impression that Mark is like in his late teens or maybe early twenties because his mom is picking him up, and he's like very dependent on on his mom. I think he's. I think they said he's eighteen because Samantha Sanders is like, you know, don't know if he'll <laughs> live to to be nineteen. Oh, okay, okay. So he's right. Yeah, right. So he's eighteen, mm-hmm. and his mom goes to take him home and on the drive home Mark just lights up a a cigarette out of nowhere and the mom's flipping out like you've never smoked before and he's like oh yeah I just felt like having one whatever but where did he get them exactly (laughs) (laughs) well didn't they sell cigarettes in the um, hospital gift shop in the late 80s early 90s yeah, they, 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 yeah. Yeah. Or the vending machines. Oh, that's right. Those vending machines. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah, okay. That's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So then he starts flipping through the radio, and there's like this heavy metal music on, and he switches it to classical music, probably something that Charlie enjoyed. And Charlie also smoked cigarettes. Um, so the mom's like, When did you start listening to classical music? And like, makes a big deal about it. Her son has grown about what? 20, 30 some odd years. <laughs> Overnight, <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he, and then they're driving by the TV studio, and he insists that she just pull into the studio and drop him off. Um, 
Yeah, and he think oh, he walks in and they think he's there to audition um, because they're auditioning for for Charlie's replacement. And then he goes up there and nails it (laughs) because he is Charlie. Yeah, he he goes up there and, like, he starts ranting in the way that Charlie would. And so the producers are like, oh, my God, you Mm -hmm. do a great impression of Charlie. And he's like, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) It seems like there would be more of a process for like hiring the host of a show rather than a you know twenty second audition. Mark, I guess on his first day on the job, he decides to have um, Samantha Sanders and the other doctor who did the procedure on the show, and he wants them to talk about the whole procedure. But Samantha Sanders won't do it because she's like, we we don't want that information leaked because it's not even like a tested surgery and. You know, you just can't go out there all willy-nilly exchanging brain cell transplants. <laughs> and then Mark, uh, like, put a question mark in my notes because he, like, falls asleep in the middle of this show. Okay. <laughs> He's not a very good host. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. But yeah, Freddie shows up, and I kind of love this part when he's Freddie shows up, and he's like, "I'm supposed to be in Charlie Nichols' dream," and then he says, "Well, what the hell? As long as I'm here," and tries to to slash at him. I, I cackled when he said this. Wait a minute, this is supposed to be trouble. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, this reminds me of a scene from like an old movie I just saw. I just watched a lot. Yeah, Freddie was like, "Wait, who are you?" Oh well, I'll I'll. And then he was like, "I'll kill two jerks with one stone." So, So then um, Mark wakes up and he learns that he has Charlie's brain cells, um, but he got Charlie's brain cells from the dream center portion of his brain, um, and there's no way to stop the cells that are multiplying, like basically Charlie's cells are multiplying inside of Mark's head, and so it's just pretty much going to be Freddy twenty four seven here pretty soon if the cells are multiplying. And you know how Freddy is; he's he's greedy. Yeah. He's greedy. <laughs> <laughs> so then they Samantha Sanders decides to try to flush out his circulatory system by hooking him to IVs, um, and he falls asleep. Mark falls asleep, and I like that you hear like the the toilet flush and the in the bathroom attached to his hospital room and, mm-hmm. and Freddie comes out of there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it was, I, I sort of, I liked the sequence a lot that, you know, Freddie's chasing him through the hospital and hiding and jumping out and slashing at him. It was a, it was a fun scene. Yeah. Yeah. Good chasing. I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. I was surprised that like, I guess it goes back to what I was talking about earlier about how he's trying to build his strength because knowing if he was at full strength, that hospital probably would have been changing like walls and stuff like that and everything. But it was just Freddy jumping out and hacking it, slashing at him, and then jumping back in the shadows and stuff like that. And, but it was still a good entertaining scene mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Lord knows he'd probably been a feat worse, like with um, Debbie or you know something like that. He could just just made the walls close in or something but you know production was probably like we don't have the type of money yeah. so <laughs> we just right. go, go, sure. go with him just run through the hallways <laughs> yeah so then um mark wakes up and he goes to like the science lab and he starts like breaking beakers and knocking things over i don't know what he's looking for but he does come across like an aborted baby inside of a glass jar and I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Why? I didn't even yeah. notice that. Oh, yeah. And, like, it, the jar wasn't even completely full of, like, formaldehyde. It was only, like, three-fourths of the way full. So I'm not <laughs> sure what happened there. Oh, wow. Yeah, but anyway, so he finds the doctor that actually did the brain cell transplant. And he drags them into a room and ties them up. And he's basically like, you have to make an antidote. And the doctor's like, I told you there's no way to make one. And he's like, oh, well, then you're going to have these dreams, too. And he injects that doctor with the same brain cells that he had. And so maybe that's what he was looking mm-hmm. for when he was ransacking the science lab. Okay, so that, that doesn't mean that both Mark 
and Dr. Herbert West about them have dreams with Freddy or something like that. Yeah, because, yeah, I think so. Because um, Mark, Mark is like, welcome to Freddy's fun house. And then he injects him in the ear with the with Charlie's brain cells. Okay, cool. Because I was thinking that he actually put the needle in his brain and then siphoned all this stuff out and then shot into um Dr. The, the, the fake Herbert West. I'm like, oh, how the hell did you sit there and manage to do that yourself oh. without passing mm. out? Okay, that cool. would have been cool. Right. Yeah, that that would have been awesome. I really like right. like squeamish though, but yeah, that would have been awesome. So, mm. yeah, and that's pretty much how the episode ends. I think it yeah. seems a little harsh. Like I don't th- like Dr. Herbert West. Like didn't didn't really do anything to deserve that because he didn't know there was this. <laughs> malevolent dream monster in charlie's head yeah that's like all true. he did was save his life with, with an experimental procedure yeah yeah <laughs> and and also he seemed like he was more of a neil dr neil from dream warriors and dr um you call her samantha <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. she reminded me too much of dr um dr sims oh dr sims dr sims yes yeah. 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 <laughs> dr. Sims, like, oh my goodness <laughs> Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, this is Dream Warriors all over again. So. Well, maybe maybe Mark injected that doctor with the same brain cells, so if he was dreaming about Freddy, he would be more motivated to come up with an antidote. Mm, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> and he could take all this time staying awake, avoiding Freddy, trying to come up with a cure. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Okay, and then um, I don't remember. Well, Freddie comes on afterward, and he's talking about like music to to his ears because he, the doctor's mm. screaming and all that. Yeah, he says an apple a day, uh, an apple a day won't keep Freddie away. And then he like mushes this bloody apple into the camera. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah how it ends. So that's cool. Yeah. So, Mark, how did you like the episode? I loved it. Um... But I love all the Freddy themed episodes of Freddy's Nightmares. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, like I said, it adds to the my own personal sense of the mythology. Um, I like that they, you know, carried on with this whole notion that the the, the, the studio was for some reason trying to like exploit these nightmares and stuff like that. And it's kind of funny that um, they're trying to do that, but they're failing horribly because <laughs> Freddy is still like knocking out most of Springfield's um population. And it's like I don't know. It seems like it was a cabal up there at the, at the um, studio here. It's like, you know, we do know that Freddy's right here killing people. So maybe if we exploit him on television, maybe that'll scare him away. Maybe that was a Maybe that was Springfield's earlier attempt at trying to eradicate Freddy Krueger from their consciousness. Oh, maybe. Like they did with Freddy mm-hmm. versus Jason. So who knows? Yeah. But yeah. I loved it. Well, good. I, I thought it was fun. It was, I, I thought the the Freddy sequences were, were really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't, I don't think it was as strong as the prequel episode, but yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. I liked the whole premise of like, injecting brain cells into one another because that is like a common philosophical question like if you if you have a brain transplant will you get that person's memories you know stuff like that um so i kind of i kind of liked it from that aspect of it um and there there was some pretty humorous parts with freddie especially when he's like wait you're not charlie like he was he was all bummed that he was in the wrong person's dream yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like I want my time back for this shit. Uh-huh. Like, I was supposed to be here killing. I just got myself set up to kill this man. Like, I can't. I can't yeah. inject my fingernails into his prostate no more. Where the hell did he go? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. that was something. Okay, all right. Well, um, did you have anything else that you wanted to promote or talk about? Um, well, I do have an article that's been. Um, it's already out in certain circles, though. But they're gonna fully drop it next week. It's gonna be about the episode. It's a review of the Black Mirror episode, Striking Vipers. Um, it's probably dropped sometime next week. And I just released another article saying um, about how the horror community needs to put some respect on R.L. Stein's Fear Street's name mm-hmm. because. Um, I I was reading a couple of um, blogs and they would always sit there and be like, 
well, the lesser known Fear Street series. I'm like, hold up, Fear Street came way before Goosebumps. Oh, yeah, totally. And established a whole lot of um, teen horror that we grew up on. So let's not, let's not act like Fear Street didn't have like some clout. It still has clout because out of all those books that we read growing up in the eighth grade or fifth grade, whatever, that's the only series that still is actually putting out new titles outside of Goosebumps. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. not do that. So yeah, yeah our, that dropped. <laughs> that dropped this morning. Christopher so. Pike kind of like fell off the face of the earth, yes. didn't he? Yeah. Yes, and every re- and all they're doing right now is reissuing his titles with modernized technology. Like you see, like the the, the uh, I think the Chain Letter series. I picked up a copy of that, and you can they have a note in the um front part of the book saying like some things have been changed and um updated, and you can see some of the teams using cell phones and iPods and stuff like that. So other than that... Oh, know. that's ridiculous. Who cares if they were using Walkmans, <laughs> you know? like <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> that's basically yeah. it's... why they remake classic horror films, just so they can put a cell phone in there and call it modernized. Like, you, exactly. you don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. People will get over and it. Like, yeah, and it's funny. I guess, I guess trying to reach younger audiences, mm-hmm. but I'm like... I'm kind of glad they're starting the Fear Street trilogy out in 1994. So it's going to go from starting in 1994 and go backwards. Okay. So it's going to be set in the time period that we where we grew up with that stuff. So it's awesome. So. Oh, good. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Um. Well, thank you again for being on the on the show. Um. Thank you guys for having oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad that an actual like Freddy's Nightmares fan slash expert kind of came on here because i think you're the only person who has watched the episodes at least more than twice (laughs) yes yes yes. thank you for listening please join us in january when we finish out the series